Okay, the next step is to test our work. We're going to plug this into our bench, our standard bench test cable, supply power to it, and see what lights up. The first thing we see is that during the first two seconds after we turn the power on, the cluster lights up all segments of the LCDs. Uh, it's doing this as a lamp test, and it's so that we can check to make sure the instrument is working properly. Um, so what we're doing is we're, we're, we're going to do this multiple times. We're looking to make sure that every single segment in these clusters turns on. Um, we'll notice that there are a couple which do not. The first one would be the, uh, this segment in the speedometer. Um, it is not necessary to show more than a three in that position. And so that segment never lights up. We're going to see the same thing in the left digit here and here. We'll notice that it shows sort of a, a two or a, a weird shape, but it never lights up the, the upper left segment uh, in, the, in the seven segment displays here or here. That is normal. They should light up and show eights everywhere else, and they do. What we see here is that we did a good job. Everything lights up the way that it should. Everything is nice and clean. And we've done a wonderful job restoring another cluster. Next, we're going to supply some signals to that cluster to make sure that uh, everything is working. We're going to test the speedometer. We're going to test the tachometer. We're going to test the odometer and make sure that those functions are working like they should. So we're supplying a 36 mile an hour signal to the cluster and we're supplying a 6,000 RPM tax signal to the cluster. We also see that this is rightmost segment of the odometer motor is turning and everything is working like it should. Today we're going to show you how to test the dimmer functions of this 84 through 89 Corvette instrument panel. There are two separate dimmers. The first is going to be the photo cell. It measures the brightness of the cabin and sets the brightness of the cluster accordingly. We can see that here in room brightness, the cluster is nice and bright. Okay, so if I remove the photocell lens and cover the photocell port with some black tape, we'll see that the cluster gets dimmer and dimmer and dimmer, responding to the fact that the cabin brightness has gotten much darker. I think that's about as dim as it's going to go. The second dimmer control that we have on the car, when we turn the headlights on, we send a battery voltage signal to pin C6 of the cluster wiring harness connector. And we'll see that almost instantly the cluster goes to full dark. At this point we have the headlight switch on and the headlight dimmer is rotated full counterclockwise for full dim. And we see the cluster responds accordingly, shows almost completely dark. As we rotate that headlight knob from counterclockwise to clockwise, we increase the voltage on pin C9 of the cluster wiring harness connector. It starts out at about six volts, and we see that here. And as we rotate that headlight knob clockwise, we're at eight volts, we're at nine volts, it's getting a little bit brighter. We're at 10 volts, we're at 12 volts. Now we're at 15 volts, which is the battery voltage that we have applied to the cluster at this point. And we see the cluster has reached as bright as it's going to get with the headlights turned on. It's fairly readable here in standard room lighting. We're going to rotate the knob full counterclockwise. We're applying uh, 6 volts to pin C9, and we have the headlight switch turned on. And we see that the cluster has reached its uh, minimum brightness. And now I'm going to uncover the photocell port and we'll see at all points in time the photocell overrides the headlight brightness. If the photocell senses that the cluster should be brighter because of uh, a bright light level in the cabin, then the cluster will brighten. Whether or not the headlights are turned on and the head headlight dimmer is set to full minimum. One of the consequences of this can be that as we pull into a garage, the light level changes significantly, and over the course of uh, a minute or so, the cluster can go from completely readable to completely unreadable. This is normal operation, and it's happening because the headlights are on. 
I hope this helps you understand how to test the two dimmer controls in the 84 through 89 Corvette instrument panel. My name is Brian Thompson and I founded the website Betty.com where you can find more free information and videos to fix Corvette electronics. You can also find the parts and tools you see us using in the videos. Thanks to your support, I'm proud to say that 10 Americans have jobs. Hi friends, 20 years of experience can make these repairs look easier than they really are. But don't worry, we have your back. If you're not getting the results you see here, then stop and pack it up and send it to us. We have the parts, the tools, and the experience needed to do the job right.